A very good evening to all of you and a very Merry Christmas. So glad that we could all gather in God's house tonight on this Christmas Eve because uh, it is uh, the night to hear about Jesus, to sing about Jesus, to pray to Jesus, to, to also proclaim the good news of Jesus. And this evening, the children of our Sunday school and uh, the young people of our congregation, the teenagers, will be leading us in doing that, proclaiming the good news about Jesus. So may God bless us as we hear that good news together tonight. So glad that you're all here uh, in person. So glad that those that are gathering at home are also um, uh, gathering uh, with us today. May the word that we hear, the words that we sing, the prayers that we pray uh, together, uh, may they all serve God for, to God's glory and to the strengthening of our faith. This evening's service is called, His Name is Jesus. And as you came in this evening, you saw a number of banners with all sorts of different names for Jesus on them. And throughout the service tonight, the children will be telling us about all those different names. And also, you'll be invited to take part in talking about some of those different names. As you look at the service program, you'll see um, all different parts uh, marked uh, for the children and the young people reading them, but also for the congregation, and then sometimes splitting up men and women in the congregation to also read the parts. Also, all of the songs, all of the songs we will all sing together. After, later in the service, um, after the offering or during the offering, we'll begin the, the candle lighting part. So um, uh, if you didn't pick one up when you came in this evening, uh, we'll be handing out small candles like this. And so during the offering, we'll light those. Uh, lighted candles are always a symbol of Jesus as the light of the world. So uh, this evening, we've got lots of candles. Um, I've got to be careful that I'm, I don't uh, back into these candles. But lots of candles and lots of the lights, all, all symbols, all remind us that Jesus is the light of the world. He is the light of our hearts. He is, he is the light. So may God bless us as we also take part in receiving that light from him and sharing that light later in the service. I invite you now to begin our service as we turn to the opening song. On page one of the service program, O Come Little Children. And God bless our worship.
Please stand. We continue our service on page two of the service program. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus, name of wondrous love, name all other names above, unto which must every knee bow in deep humility. Jesus, name decreed of old, to the maiden mother told, kneeling in her lowly cell by the angel Gabriel. Jesus, name of priceless worth, to the fallen here on earth, for the promise that it gave, Jesus shall his people save. Jesus, only name that's given under all the mighty heaven, whereby all who sin is slain, first their fetters and are saved. Jesus, name of wondrous love, human name of God above, pleading only this we too, flee, O God, in faith to you. Let us pray. Gracious and loving Lord God, who cared for us by sending a Savior to redeem us from the curse of sin, we lift our hearts and voices to you in adoration and praise. May we discover this evening that the many names of Jesus are meant to teach us of the saving work and loving nature of our Savior and friend. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I imagine that everyone here shares a number of things in common. For instance, we all have eyes, right? Ears, hearts in here, stomachs, feet. Those are all things that we were born with. In fact, uh, we all had them months before we were born. It's really amazing when we think about the, the miracle that God carries out as he makes a little human being in the, in the, the stomach of its mother. But there is something we all have in common that we were given right after we were born, and we still take it with us wherever we go. I'll give you a hint. It's something that was given to us at birth, and it stays with us for the rest of our lives. Can you think of what that is? His name is Jesus, and the names that we have are something that we all have in common. Like Jesus was given a name when he was born, we all too were given names when, when we were born. So when each of us was born, our parents took loving thought into giving us just the perfect name. They maybe looked at books with lists of thousands and thousands of names, and, and they selected the one that would stay with us the rest of our lives. So some people were named Stephen, some people were named James, Brody, Ava, Eliana, Aiden, John. We won't take the time to list all of the, all the names here today, but that's some of the names that, that were given. When we look into the Bible, we notice that some people had names that sound very common to us today. For example, names like Daniel, Ruth, Mark, James, and John. Well, other had names that sounded very that sound very unusual to us. Do you know that there were ladies in the Bible named Gomer, Cosby, and Oholibama? And there were people, men named Hashabiah and Maher Shalal Hashbaz. Pity him, huh? <laughs> and Tychicus. These names sound strange to us today, but to those who lived at that time they were probably pretty customary names, common names. Many people choose names because of what they mean. Some of you have the name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Or names like David means one who is beloved, and Abigail means cause of joy, and, 
I know there's a young lady in our congregation whose name is Beatrice, which means blessing from God. Today we are going to take a trip back in time, you could say. We're going to walk through the streets of a little town called Bethlehem. In a way, as we walk through passages of the Bible, we'll walk through Bethlehem, which, by the way, that name means house of bread, if you didn't know that. That's an interesting name. Until we find a stable where a young lady has just given birth to a baby boy. And as we hear the words, we'll, in a way, kind of quietly step into that stable, We'll peek at the tiny baby and see him all wrapped up in strips of clean cloth, and then we will slowly look up at the mother and ask a very revealing question. What is his name? What is his name? So tonight we're going to take a look at all different names, and as you turn the page and look at the remainder of the, the program, you'll see that there are five different parts to the program tonight, the service, and Within each part, there are three different names. And as we come to each name, uh, one of the, the young people will announce the next name, that, that name that we are uh, focusing on at that moment. So as we begin, we join to sing the song, Jesus, Name Above All Names. Did you hear that? His name is Jesus. Tonight, we're going to take a close look at the name of Jesus. In fact, we're going to take a look at many names that were either given to Jesus or used for him. There were uh, many names given to him by the angels uh, that were told of his work, names that showed his love for us, names that proved he was God, names of strength and names of humility, names of his office and names of his glory someone once counted about 40 names mentioned in the bible that speak of jesus for if anyone deserved many names it was the very special baby who came to be our lord and savior at first we see this banner tall and there are names we know they 
they mean that Jesus came for all because he loves us so. Emmanuel. Matthew 1, verses 22 and 23 tells us, All this took place to fulfill what the Lord has said to the prophet. The virgin will be with a child, and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. The first name we see on our banner is that of Emmanuel. This name was given hundreds of years before the birth of Jesus. It was spoken by Isaiah in his prophecy about Jesus being born of the Virgin Mary, and just as the scripture says, it means God with us. Listen carefully to what Isaiah wrote. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The Virgin will give you a child, and will give birth to a son, and will call him Emmanuel. is Messiah. The name Messiah means the anointed one. In Old Testament times, when the kings and prophets were made ready for their office, they were anointed by pouring oil on their heads. In Greek, the word for anointed is Christos. We know it better as Christ. It's interesting to know that although the Old Testament people waited for the coming of the Messiah, the Christ, the word Messiah, is never mentioned in the Old Testament. from the Old Testament. Those people waited thousands of years for their Savior to be born. 
During this time, they gave the coming Messiah many different names. One of the most unique names is heard in the passage from Jeremiah 23. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch. This is the name by which he will be called, the Lord of Righteousness. Jeremiah is speaking about growing a tree. He tells us that out of the root of King David, Jesus' ancestor, a long-awaited branch would grow. That branch would be Jesus. Son of God. Luke 3, verse 22 says, And the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love, with you I am well pleased. And Gabriel was speaking to Mary. He also gave Jesus another name which we notice several times in the New Testament. It is certainly fitting to call Jesus the Son of God, for we know that although a human being named Mary was his mother, God the Father was his true father. That makes him rightfully God's only son. Listen to what the angel Gabriel told Mary about the baby she would carry. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Thank you. 
Son of David. Matthew 1, verse 1 says, The record of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the Son of David. In the very first verse of the New Testament, we see Jesus given the name Son of David. This tells us he was part of the family of David. It was correct to call him by such a name, since David was Jesus' direct ancestor 28 generations earlier. When you read the first chapter of Matthew, you can find the entire list of names, all the way from Abraham right up to Jesus. Son of the Most High. Luke 1 verse 22 says, He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. Here in the first chapter of Luke, we see another mention of Jesus as a son. Only this time, he's called the Son of the Most High. In other words, Jesus is truly the Son of God. I make Jesus true God as well as true man. kept on getting mad at me that I wasn't part of the children but anyway let's go back to the night the night so long ago as we hear the beautiful story of Jesus birth in Bethlehem in those days Caesar issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world this was the first census that took place while Jesus was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up the in Galilee to Judah, Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house in the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for him in the manger. Thank you. 
word. Revelations 19, verse 13 says, He is dressed in a robe dripping to blood, and his name is the Word of God. The first name on our banner, on our third banner, seems to be a strange name for anyone. When John began to write in his book about Jesus, he started by calling Jesus simply Word. Would you want to be called Word? Why was Jesus called that? To find that answer, we must first go all the way back to the creation story in Genesis. When we look carefully at the story, we find that every time God wished to create something, he said some words like, let there be light. John just wants to let us know that Jesus was there at that creation, at the creation. He was the words. Listen how John writes about the word in chapter one of his gospel. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Did you know Jesus was also called a lamb? He got that name because lambs were often used for sacrifice in Old Testament times. A sacrificial lamb was a symbol that the sins of the people were forgiven because they were laid on the shoulders of the lamb. Does that sound like Jesus too? He died once and the sins of each of us were laid on his shoulders. Look what Jesus' cousin John called him one day as he saw Jesus coming toward him. Look, the Lamb of God, 
who takes away the sin of the world. Prince of Peace. Isaiah 9, verse 9 says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called a wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. The last of the names on our third banner is also from the Old Testament. Jesus once said, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. What a beautiful thought spoken by one who is known as the Prince of Peace. <laughs> Savior. Micah 6, verse 7 says, But as for me, I watch in the hope of the Lord. I wait for God my Savior. Before we heard the name of Jesus means before we heard that name, that the name of Jesus means Savior, now we find there were many times where Jesus was also called by the name Savior. In fact, he was called that over 50 times. It's a very simplistic word. Uh, in fact, uh, do, 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 do. Uh, sorry, uh, the Jesus would, <laughs> very simply stated, it means that Jesus would save us all from the power of the devil. He is truly wonderful. He's a truly wonderful savior. He is a savior that we all need. Remember the words we heard in the Christmas story earlier. Now let's listen to the rest of the Christmas story. Shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the shone shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to stop them, Do not be afraid, but I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the sound of the angel. The Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them, and God into heaven, heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has, has told us about. about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told of them about this child. And all, all who heard it were amazed at the what shepherds, the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told.
who replies by the mistake. For this is what the prophet had written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be shepherd of my people Israel. Not long ago we called Jesus a lamb, and now we are about to also call him a shepherd. That's right, there are several places where we speak of Jesus leading his flock. That's us, just like a shepherd would lead a flock of sheep. And we know that Jesus isn't just any shepherd, he's called the good shepherd. In Revelation, Jesus is called both a lamb and a shepherd in the same verse. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water. And again we hear Psalm 23, verse 1, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. Tonight we gather to worship a baby who was born in a lowly stable in Bethlehem. We silently kneel before him to worship him and give him thanks for the many blessings he has given to us. And of all these blessings, the best by far is the blessing of forgiveness of our sins. After 33 years, that baby once lying in a Christmas manger would be nailed to a cross to take away everyone's sins. This all happened because there once was a time when we belonged to the devil. We, he owned us, and he had big plans to take us with him into hell because we couldn't pay the price to free ourselves from the slavery of sin. But Jesus said he would set us free. He said he would pay the price. That price was high. It was his own blood. When someone pays the price to set someone else free, it is called redeeming. That's why Jesus is our Redeemer. He brought us back. Now we belong to Him. Job 19, verse 25 says, I know that my Redeemer lives, and that in the end He will stand upon the earth. The fifth and, and final, final banner, banner shows us all the hope we, we find. find. Cause joy in Jesus always grows beyond each Christmas time. Alpha and Omega. Revelation 1 verse 8 says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. At first we might be tempted to ask, what this last banner has to do with Christmas? After all, isn't this supposed to be a celebration of Jesus' birth in Bethlehem? Isn't it just supposed to be about Mary and Joseph and shepherds and angels? Yes, indeed, it is about that. But they, too, were very thankful that Jesus wasn't born for just one night of celebration. Mary and Joseph and the shepherds saw the wonder of their first meeting with the baby Jesus. But it was because of who Jesus was that they stood there in amazement. 
They saw before them a future of hope and joy and heaven and life everlasting. That baby in the manger was never intended to remain a baby forever. He was to be a savior, a king, and a lord because he was God. The Alpha and Omega are the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. It's as if we would say the A and Z. Jesus is the A and Z, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He was the first before the creation of the universe, and he will be last to the very edges of an endless eternity. Oh yes, that baby in the manger was around a long, long time before he opened his eyes in Bethlehem, and he will be around forever. Revelation 22 verse 13 says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. second group of words we see on our final banner is Lord of all. In Jesus, in Jesus' day, it was not unusual to call someone Lord. Wealthy people, landowners, and those in high places were often called Lord. But with Jesus, it was different. When the Bible spoke of Jesus, it wasn't just referring to any Lord who happened to be important at that time. Rather, it was referring to the Lord Jesus, a person of the Godhead. That's why we often find terms such as Lord of Lords and Lord of Glory and Lord of All. of the words tonight is very fitting. What was it that the wise men were searching for? Why did they travel to the capital city of Jerusalem? Why did they go directly to King Herod in hope of getting information? It was because they were looking for a king, and indeed they were right. For in that manger of Bethlehem, among the sheep and cows, the dust and dirt bedded down in a used feed box and wrapped in strips of cloth 
lay not only a baby boy, but the king of all the universe. Jesus is a king indeed. His kingdom is far greater than any earthly king could ever hope to come in. He rules on the throne in heaven, and his loyal subjects do indeed bow down to him and worship him as their glorious king. What a joy to remember the coming of this king each Christmas. That's the thrill we feel when we bow before his manger bed and worship our newborn king. Rejoice and pray, O daughter of Zion, shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See your king come to you, righteous and having salvation.
Let us pray. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we are thankful that you fulfilled all of your ancient promises and sent us a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Your Son left the glory of heaven and became flesh of our flesh. He became our brother so that through him we might become your children. We marvel at his grace that though he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor so that we through his poverty might become rich. We are indeed rich for we have peace with you and access to your throne in every need. Dear Savior, give us a simple childlike faith that sees your glory even in your lowliness. Help us all to rejoice in your birth. In sincere faith we join the song of the angels, share the delight of the shepherds, and adore you with the magi. May the truth, love, and redemption that you have brought dwell in our hearts and lives. Like Mary, May we keep all these things and ponder them in our hearts. And since you came for all people, help us share the good news of great joy we have in you. As you have shown us your glory on this holy evening, so one day bring us into your glory in heaven, where we will take our places among the saints and angels, there we will forever praise and glorify you for the grace and mercy you have shown to us, poor sinners. Hear us, O Lord, for the sake of your name. Amen. And in your name, Lord Jesus, we also join to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look at you with favor and give you peace. Amen. All these names for Jesus certainly make us reflect on the work and life of our Savior. But didn't we forget one very important name? What did the angel Gabriel tell Joseph and Mary about the naming of her baby? Matthew 1, 1 says, you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. No name is more dear to the hearts of God's children than Jesus. The first song many of us ever sang was, Jesus Loves Me. Jesus is the New Testament name for Joshua, which means Savior. It was given by the angel Gabriel to Mary before Jesus was ever born. Let us all join together in telling how Mary and Joseph obeyed Gabriel's command in Luke 2, verse 21. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise him, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he was conceived.
Very Merry Christmas to all of you. Thank you, young people, children, for telling us about Jesus tonight, telling us of all those names that say so much about him. Thank you for all, part- for all of you that participate in the service uh, here and at home. May the words and the names of Jesus uh, fill us and be on our hearts and minds, not just at Christmas time, but all year long. And may they be names that we talk to others about as we tell others about the good news of Jesus. Again, thank you to all who serve tonight, the children of our Sunday school, our young people, uh, those the teachers that helped them, uh, those who provided the music, those who provided uh, for the setup, the decorations, the poinsettias. Uh, actually, providing the poinsettias was actually quite, uh, quite a role this year. That was a little bit hard to do, so thank you for those who, who provided uh, for them and uh, uh, searched far and wide so that uh, they would give glory to God here tonight. As you leave the, tonight, uh, we have some things to share with you. There is, I guess you could say, a gift table with a number of things. Um, they have some uh, coffee mugs, uh, our, our loved uh, anniversary coffee mugs. We still have those and would love to share those with you, especially if you haven't received one of those yet um, over the past a month or two. Um, and this time, they're, they're filled with some more uh, goodies, so uh, I do enjoy one of those. There's also some, some books, uh, other things, okay, hymnals, hymnals. Uh, if uh, you're, you're moved to, to sing tonight, as you were, uh, and want to continue with that, um, actually, we encourage you to take a hymnal or two home with you. Uh, we actually have uh, two congregations worth of hymnals now, and uh, we'd love to share those with you in your home. <laughs> so uh, either take one that's uh, in the pew rack uh, in front of you, or uh, there are some uh, stacks of them on, on that gift table in the entryway. So uh, I do take a, a hymnal home with you. and. And use it. Use it for singing um, uh, all year long. Are there other announcements or anything else to, to say tonight? To say thank you to those who served and to say thanks be to God that we can, can gather tonight, that we can gather inside tonight. If you remember a year ago, we were uh, on the other side of this wall, and it was a very nice night. Uh, so we, we thank the Lord uh, that he's given us another good night that we could be here uh, traveling here safely and then traveling home again. Well, God bless you tonight. Uh, uh, Tomorrow, this weekend, uh, we gather again tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock for a Christmas Day worship service. And then uh, Sunday, Sunday is kind of like another Christmas service of the first Sunday after Christmas, also at a regular time of 10 o'clock. God bless your evening. May God give you safe travels home. And may you rejoice that Christ has been born for you. Good night.